Great. All right. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Kieran Garamella. Uh, I'm a senior computational scientist here at the Broad Institute, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to talk about the Broad's recent installation of the PAC BioSQL 2 and uh, some of the lessons that we've learned from our uh, uh, initial uh, 30 or 40 runs of the instrument. Uh, before I get started, there are uh, a number of people that I am presenting on behalf of who have done a lot of work behind the scenes. Uh, uh, in particular, Mara Costello, who's been doing 100% of the library construction and physical sequencing efforts at the Broad. Uh, and uh, Roberto, who's been my contact at PacBio, who's given a tremendous amount of useful feedback in getting our instrument uh, and data processing workflows uh, up and running. So primarily, the Broad has been interested in, uh, in using the, the new SQL 2 instrument to generate the, 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 the CCS, or uh, what's now called the, the Hi-Fi reads. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with this data type, briefly what, uh, what occurs is a, uh, a long double-stranded DNA fragment uh, is, uh, is isolated from the genome, uh, the circuit uh, adapters, these bell-shaped adapters, are ligated to either end, and then a uh, polymerase is uh, affixed to the structure, which begins sequencing in a circle, displacing uh, previously sequenced uh, 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 bases as it goes along, uh, and resulting in these uh, this pattern of forward and reverse subreads with the uh, with the circular adapter. Uh, interspersed. The adapters are easily computationally removed, and then all of the subreads are uh, collapsed into a single high accuracy consensus sequence. As part of our initial evaluation of the instrument, uh, uh, PacBio has given us uh, uh, 32 smart cells and reagents. Uh, for use on uh, various projects of interest to, um, to, to lab members at the Broad. Uh, we divided those samples up into basically two bins. On the left-hand side are uh, data sets that largely overlap with the HGSV consortium efforts. Uh, so a lot of trios from the NHGRI and HapMap uh, sample collections at Corio. All of that data was chosen because uh, we intend to release it publicly through HGSV uh, uh, to the world. And then on the right, uh, right hand side are a number of clinical samples. Uh, these reflect um, trios where a, a cryptic uh, variant, uh, we hope, underlies some interesting Mendelian disease. It reflects uh, tumor normal cell line pairs. Uh, that we're hoping to use the instrument to, to elucidate some of the more complex SVs that are occurring in those samples. Uh, and there are some repeat expansion disorders that um, our, our clinical partners have been interested in, in examining in, in greater detail. Okay. What's happening here? Okay, well, hopefully you can still see the slide this way. So on average, per, uh, per smart cell, we're seeing around 300 gigabases of, uh, of uh, data per smart cell. Uh, and uh, as the instrument uh, does a number of circular passes uh, 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 around these, uh, these reads, we're seeing around 10 passes uh, per read. We have run PacBio's uh, circular consensus uh, error correction tool on the data. And on the left-hand side of this uh, page, I'm showing um, uh, data before error correction, after error correction, and then some of the NIST platinum genomes data for comparison. So before error correction, we're seeing error rates that are around uh, 10% uh, Q10. Uh, after error correction, we see um, uh, error rates drop by approximately an order of magnitude. 
somewhere between the 23 and the uh, Q23 and Q25 mark, depending on whether you're measuring for uh, mismatch errors, uh, insertions, or, or deletions. Uh, for comparison, the recent data uh, made available through the Platinum Genomes Project, uh, which are Illumina data sets, uh, come in at an average of uh, Q24, Q25. Uh, and obviously the, the indel error mode in uh, Illumina data is much, much lower than it is for, for, for PacBio data. But still, after correction, we're seeing comparable error rates between the, the two data sets, which is uh, pretty remarkable. Of the remaining errors that we see, 94% of them are, are simply one base uh, insertion and deletion errors, which are fairly easy to, to deal with algorithmically. One of the big challenges that we uh, had in getting our pipeline up and running is uh, because the road is uh, uh, a, a production center, it's become increasingly inefficient for us to run the computation on local compute uh, as we are, you know, we are constantly on the verge of filling up hard drives or not simply not having enough CPUs to, uh, to, to, to run some of the, the more algorithmically intensive algorithms that we'd like to run. Uh, we've solved that problem for Illumina data by migrating all of the compute to Google Cloud, and we've done exactly the same for the PacBio data as well. So 100% of the, uh, the workflow that we've implemented is purely on uh, Google Cloud Compute. Uh, and that requires uh, a little bit of care in, in terms of uh, processing the data, making sure that all of the data that should be corrected together is corrected together. Uh, those tools are being uh, 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 released as part of the, the GTK. They're available now with the, at the link below. Uh, and uh, eventually these will migrate to the, the master branch. Similarly, with the workflow description that we, uh, we uh, use in production for all of this data, that is being uh, released publicly as well at the, at the link, uh, the GitHub link below. Briefly, the way that our processing works is we take the uncorrected BAM file that's emitted by the PacBio instrument, uh, and that is the final processing that is done on premises at the Broad. It, a, after the instrument writes it out to a local disk, it immediately gets uploaded to uh, uh, Google Cloud Storage, where we split it up into around 300 to 400 different shards. Each shard is uh, corrected uh, using four threads. So we're running around 1200 to 1600 fold uh, parallel in the cloud. And similarly, with the variant calling, we're, you know, we're, we're throwing basically every variant caller that we can, we can find, also in parallelized fashion, so that we can make calls with the GATK, Deep Variant, PacBio's own PBSV tool, uh, Sniffles, uh, uh, Svim, I think, was added to the pipeline yesterday. Uh, and uh, as a result, this pipeline you know, runs end to end from uncorrected data to uh, variant calls uh, in somewhere between uh, one to two days. Depends on whether you opt for Google Cloud's ability to give you um, high priority compute in which you don't share the nodes with anyone or low priority compute where other users of the cloud may preempt your jobs. Uh, meaning they take a little bit longer, but the nodes themselves are five times or one fifth the cost of the, the high priority nodes. One of the really interesting things that we're, we're looking at with these data sets is their ability to, uh, to establish a, a ground truth for classes of variation that we've historically not had ground truth data for, particularly SVs that are greater than 50 bases long. Uh, and in this screenshot, I've, I've, I've put together what I think is a, a, a nice example of the, the challenges that we face with short read sequencing and why the Broad is so excited about long read sequencing. So uh, in the top panel, I have some data from NA12878 that was from a recent Illumina HiSeq run. Uh, and as you can see, there seem to be three things going on in this panel. First, there's a variant on the five prime side and another heterozygous variant on the three prime side. 
And then in the middle is some cryptic event that was not called by any of our short read callers. There are a lot of um, reads that are mismapped here. There's a lot of sequencing error rate uh, noise. There seems to be a dip in coverage. So visually, it, it's apparent that perhaps something is going on, but it's very difficult for the, the short read based structural variant caller to make a definitive call as to uh, what the nature of this event is. Plus the phase between the, the five prime heterozygous site and the three prime heterozygous site is, is not at all elucidated from the, from the short reads, uh, which, which just don't span this nearly 750 base region. Uh, in comparison, we have uh, two replicates of the NA1287 and uh, 78 data set on long reads. Uh, and then the the mother and father uh, for 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 that child as well, uh, all sequenced with uh, PacBio CCS reads. And what becomes clear is that this variant is is very clearly in uh, in the I think this is the, the uh, mother uh, absent in the father, and then present in both replicates of the uh, 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 of the child. And furthermore, these variants, which we which we could not phase before, uh, now visually their phase is is very clear that they are both in phase with this nearly 300 base uh, deletion in the in the child that's been inherited from uh, from the mom. Here's another example. This is a 32 kilobase locus, and the region that I've highlighted in red uh, harbors a, a fairly large inversion, almost uh, 1,200 bases long. But because that event is so large, you would imagine the 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 uh, signal in the Illumina data is is not quite clear. Whereas in the PacBio data, we have a clear as day signal with uh, a lot of reads that uh, that seem to map correctly uh, right up until the point where they hit the uh, the the break points for the the inversion event, and then it appears that all of the the bases are suddenly mismapped to the, the the reference. And by just looking down the column, you can tell what the the inversion sequence is. This is another event that we're particularly excited about because. It's not clear how you would call this uh, event with the Illumina data. The PacBio data makes it very clear as to the, the nature of, uh, of this event. Other things that we're interested in are looking at uh, uh, regions of the genome with high genomic diversity. Uh, for example, the, the, the HLA on chromosome 6. On the top panel, once again, I have the Illumina data for uh, for this region for one of our samples, and you can see that there's a tremendous amount of coverage variability across the gene body of HLA-B uh, versus in the PAC bio data, where we see uh, very consistent coverage throughout the uh, the entire uh, locus. And one of the things that we're doing right now is is developing. Uh, an HLA caller uh, that will run on the, 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 the long read data for all of the samples that we run through our production pipeline. So to, to, to wrap up very quickly, I think we're, we're very impressed with the PacBio, uh, the SQL2 data. The error correction does seem to work very well, uh, reduces the error rate by uh, more than an order of magnitude bringing it in line with the, the data quality that we expect to see from sort of typical um, uh, Illumina runs. We're getting around uh, uh, 10x coverage of, of corrected data per smart cell with uh, quite uniform uh, uh, coverage over the diverse uh, regions of the genome. All of the pi pipelines that we're uh, producing are available publicly in the in the GitHub link that I've I've mentioned below. Like I said, uh, depending on whether you opt for low priority or high priority compute, uh, this runs for uh, somewhere between one and two days for a total of thirty dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars per sample. Uh, this will eventually be featured as part of the. Uh, the online uh, uh, 
pipeline tools that the Broad has uh, uh, been releasing um, called, uh, it used to be called FireCloud, now it's called Terra. Uh, and finally, the, the, you know, the, the particular uh, exciting thing for us is the long reads ability to elucidate uh, or rather enable the discovery of SVs that have been previously undetectable for us with, uh, with short read data. Uh, and this is an ongoing area of development for us. Uh, when we have finished constructing the truth data sets for the HTSV trios, that's going to be released uh, publicly so that anyone who's working on variant callers will have some truth data set to, to work with. Um, uh, and with that, I will um, hand it back to our next speaker. And I'll look forward to your questions at the end of the talk.